Welcome, if you're new to my channel, my name's Jan Radu and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I live in Perth in Western Australia. I have been creating some cards using the Celebration products, the Berry Blessing stamp set and the Berry Delightful designer series paper. These are available free until the end of February um, with a qualifying order during our Celebration promotion. And this is the first card in a series of three videos that I'll be bringing to you this week. So I'm focusing on different masking techniques using the basic pattern decorative masks, this particular design, and also the blending brushes that are new in the mini catalogue. So I'm just taping the mask down over a piece of Whisper White cardstock or basic white cardstock, whichever one you have, and just using the blending tool in a circular motion creating a bit of an abstract design with the granny apple green ink and um, it's good to layer the colors to get a, a deeper a, a deeper um, color variation or you can swap over to a darker green like I have here which is the mossy meadow ink so just holding the mask down it shouldn't move with the tape in place but holding the mask steady and just applying some ink starting lighter and adding another layer just to make a darker a darker ink look there and as you'll see when I lift up the mask it creates a really nice ombre look then I'm running it through the um, stamp and cut and emboss machine with the 3d subtle embossing folder I love the idea of texture over inking and you'll see when I open it up here it's just got a really nice subtle texture on there hence the name I played around with a garden green cardstock base um, and there's my DSP which is part of the Berry Delightful DSP but I did settle on Pear Pizzazz I thought that that, that um, toned better toned in better so I use the paper trimmer and just to score it with the with the scoring tool section of the paper trimmer so you've got one cutting blade and one scoring blade so I've scored a standard card half the size scored it in half and then I'm just um, placing my items just to make sure I like the the layer and the colors before we move forward so using my stamp and pierce mat because we're stamping with photopolymer the berry blessing stamp set is photopolymer so it's see-through which makes it much easier to stamp but it does like to have that foam base underneath you definitely get a better impression that way so I've stamped the outline of my berries in blackberry bliss and now I'm using the infill stamp, the two-step stamping, and I've got Rich Razzleberry here. And I'm just stamping over the top. It's just a really quick, easy way to colour in your stamp without having to use any other colouring tools like markers or uh, water colouring or anything like that. Bringing the Mossy Meadow back in. The um, stamp set's got some really great leaves. It's got a couple of different leaves. It's got the, the little stem that goes with the berry and it's got basically the raspberry or blackberry like I'm using today. And then it's also got some little blueberries, which are gorgeous. So I've just stamped three of the hanging leaf stamp. And I'm gonna use the blending brushes just to blend in some color um, rather than coloring in the whole stamped image. Just coming in with the granny apple green and doubling up on the color at the top to create that darker look and then the highlight on the leaf down the bottom just I, I like the depth of color that it gives when you are heavier on the ink at the top and then that bottom leaf just stays a little bit lighter that's a really quick coloring way um, this particular stamp set doesn't have matching dies so I will be fussy cutting those out so it doesn't matter about inking over the edge so I'm just preparing the little stem stamps I was going to actually use the two-step stamping but I decided to bring in a different coloring method just to show you the different combinations and I'm just going to stamp the outline in mossy meadow so we'll just place those just over the top of the little berry bunches and like I said I was going to use the secondary stamp but then I changed my mind and I brought in the Stampin' Blends in Granny Apple Green and I'm going over the leaf section in the lightest marker so I just lay that color down 
and then I'll bring in the dark granny apple green blend and just fill in the tops there and once you've laid that darker color down then I'm going to bring the lighter marker back in go over the whole thing again and that blends that color out this is really simple coloring but it's quite sweet and effective now I'll go ahead and fussy cut all of those pieces with my snips I find this really therapeutic some people can't stand fussy cutting but I actually really like it a definite tip here when you're fussy cutting is to keep your scissors quite still but move the cardstock backwards and forwards and that enables your, your blade to get nice and close to the edge of the stamped image it's a little hard to see with my fast forwarding in the video here but yeah keep your scissors still and move the paper around so now we've got those cut out we'll use the tasteful label dies for our sentiment so bringing back in some whisper white and I think we're stamping with rich razzleberry it's a really nice sentiment do you always have what does it say you always have a way of making my day that's very sweet Do you like to stamp two as well? I always stamp two just in case one's better than the other. So I run that through my Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine. Chelsea Christensen from at Creative Chelsea shared a really great tip on Instagram the other day. So after running the, the die through the machine, you just line the die back up into place, uh, the piece of paper back, back up into place, and then you use your stylus just to go around the border like I am here. You can do it a couple of times for a, a more a more pronounced embossed indent but you'll see when I turn it over it creates this really nice embossed look on your die cut so I've placed all my items on my card front and now I'm just um, adding adhesive some tear, uh, tear and tape to a piece of fun foam and I just use that with a little bit of glue just standard glue stick in the middle just to create some really nice stable dimension to my card front this stops it from sagging or collapsing in on itself when you pop it through the post as well but it creates a really nice solid feel to your card you can use dimensionals if you don't have um, fun foam but um, I do like to do this so I'm popping that down now into place and it's looking good really liking the texture in that one so this is one pattern of the DSP from the Berry Delightful designer series paper really soft colors and I really like um, using just a little bit of pattern paper on my card like I have here you don't need to use a whole heap sometimes I do go nuts and use <laughs> three or four patterns on one card which I also like but this soft subtle look is quite sweet with just a little hint of DSP as well so now I'm ready to stick everything down I'm just using tear and tape for the DSP piece oh by the way I the designs on the edge of this DSP so I created that look using the lovely labels pick a punch I've actually got a video with some tips on using that lovely labels pick a punch which I'll add up the top I'll add a link for you if you want to go and check that out and just using some foam tape to put my large sentiment piece down Once that's into place, we'll just use some Tombow and start building on all the other little elements. Tombow's great being that it's got a little bit of wiggle room when you pop it down. If it's not quite in the right place, you can move it around a little bit. And you'll see I just popped the um, clear block on top of that leaf while it just while it dried. And just using some mini Stampin' Dimensionals now to add the berries. And where it's going to overlap on the higher piece on my label I've just popped a little bit of Tombow on there I think I must have lined this little bunch of fruit up about five times trying to figure out which was the best 
the best placement. But I finally got enough courage to stick it down. So just using some Tombow, pop the leaves down there. Tuck that little berry in. That one seems to have lost its stem. I must have chopped that one off when I fussy cut it. And the final piece, just tucking that berry underneath. With a little bit of a mini dimensional on there too. And a card is not a card without some sequins. So I'm bringing in the woven thread sequins. You wouldn't think at first that the colours match, but they tend to have the uncanny knack of picking up whatever other colour is on your card. I'm just using the putty in the take a pick tool um, or take your pick tool to um, pick up the sequin. A little bit of Tombow where the sequin needs to go. And then using the other end of the take your pick tool just to hold that sequin in place until that glue dries a little. I always do my sequins in threes. So if you've got a bit of a long wish list and um, you'd like to take advantage of the celebration promotion, you can order online with me. The link will be in the description in the video below. And if I can help you with an order, don't hesitate to reach out, send me an email or drop me a comment on my Instagram. And that's the first card of the three card series. Thanks very much for watching. I'd love you to subscribe and check back for the next card. Thanks a lot. Bye.